Hey folks, Clyde Lindsay here at Leechburg Lights. Thanks for taking the time to check out today's video. Today's video is on X Lights, and as always, make sure you click on the help button, click on the donate link, and make sure that you're taking a second to thank the developers and thank the uh, creator and help out with supporting the uh, the program that we're using to create some amazing effects to really brighten up people's holidays. So uh, with that being said, let's get right into today's video. Actually, today's video is on a previous video that I had done in uh, uh, 2000, let's see, 2015. Uh, I created this uh, 96 pixel spinner. Uh, you can go to my uh, Leechburg Lights uh, YouTube page and uh, if you click on search and you search for spinner or 96 pixel spinner, you'll find this video. And uh, this video shows how I made a pixel spinner using some PVC and uh, drilling out the holes using a homemade jig, a drill press, and a half inch uh, countersink drill bit. Uh, this was a fun project and actually a project that I completed once again last night. And I created the uh, second spinner and it's been only, uh, you know, what, two years since I posted this video. It, yeah, 2015, it's 2017. Um, so I created its brother, I guess you could say. And uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, wire it a little differently than I had wired it uh, in back in 2015. In 2015, I actually started the spinner. We'll say this is the first node here, and this is the last node here. And I've spliced in an individual line to go from here all the way back up to this uh uh, first node here that way I could continue with the second string and then spliced in again and run another line up here so this was the first of the third line and then the first of the fourth so just to give you an idea and uh, you know he need to hear that but uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up that's how I had done it and I changed my thought process a little bit and it's mostly because of a few things one of them being the Boscoyo snowflakes so if we go into my layout here and we uh, have a look at some of the snowflakes Boscoy has made. Uh, you can go in and open this up. And I didn't want to go through the nightmare of splicing in a, a wire to go from the end of the snowflake back to the beginning of the next snowflake. It became much easier to think about wiring a snowflake as in uh, as an individual line going in and then coming out like I did the spinner but leaving spaces for me to kind of hopscotch or leapfrog back into so that I could return back to the starting point and then do the same thing again. As you can see here, the spinners are, or the, um, I'm sorry, the snowflake is built with, here's number one, then we skip down to number two here, we leave a space, and we skip down here to number three, leaving a space, and then over to here, bouncing over here, five, and then back to our empty node holes, which are here, six and seven, and thus creating a return loop. But how effects are rendered on a snowflake, uh, are they are rendered as a matrix. So this is a this is a 25 by 25 matrix, if you will. Uh, and if you, the vectors will start here directly in the center. This is the center node here. So if you do like a, a shockwave effect, it'll start here in the middle and work its way out. But if you do anything by changing, if you do any effect or render the effect using the, the sub buffer or the layer setting box, it will, and you can change it to the single line, it will actually follow the single nodes and you'll see that the effects are skipping nodes and kind of delayed. They look a little weird because the, the single line would go out and then back and then out, then back, then out, then back. And you'll see that when we get into doing some of the sequencing. But I wanted to share this with you because this is how, this is the thought process I use to rewire my new spinner, which is right here. And if I click on this, you can open it up and see that uh, I didn't start directly in the center. I started one out from the center and I went one, Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then come in one and then leapfrogged back seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And I did that uh, equilaterally through the entire spinner model going in a clockwise direction, just as I had done with the other ones. The only difference is, is I didn't have to splice. The splicing literally took me, I remember, about an hour to solder. There's twelve, uh, there's, there's literally like twelve uh, individual um, uh, splices that you'd have to do if you were uh, wanting to keep this 
uh, numerically correct so that it would start here and then end here and then start here and then end here. But now that uh, it's three years later and we have this wonderful thing called submodels, uh, we're going to continue on and I want to revisit a little bit about what I did in my last video which was setting up the submodels. Now um, I created uh, in for the spinner I created this leg order uh, um, submodel and this has every single leg with its own additional row I just created add and I created I, I start I named it leg order we'll do two okay and then I put the node ranges in here and I clicked add row put the node ranges in here clicked add row put the node ranges in here and I created basically each individual leg with its own node range now originally what I started doing was node 1 through 12 and then this was uh, this was uh, node 13 through uh, 24 and 25 through uh, 36 and it, I mean I could keep going and doing this but the problem with n numbering the uh, the physical nodes became that whenever I used the single strand or the single line uh, uh, the render method through the single strand or the single line uh, then what would happen is it, it would send the pixel data through the first node, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, and then it would return it back to the center. So if I wanted to go straight out with an effect, it would go straight out and then it would pop backwards. And it, it was a neat effect, that, don't get me wrong, but it's not the effect that I had been looking for. So what I did was I kind of trashed that original model and I went and I created this one here and I followed linearly from the center how I wanted the effect to uh, start, where, what node number I wanted it to start with. So when you create your models with your submodels, that is, when you create your submodels with these nodes, what you need to do is you need to go through and you need to uh, put in here the physical first node that's in the string, not the numbered node that's in the string. So it pays attention to that physical node order. And so I went through and I did that, and obviously it's every other one. It's 12, 1, 11, 2, 10, 3, 9, 4, and so forth, the 24. And I created, I added another row, and I created one for just, so you can see it's highlighted. Here's the first line, the second line, the third line, the fourth submodel, the fifth submodel, the sixth submodel, seventh. These are sub-submodels of the main submodel. Now, then I went back through after I created this, and I created just the submodel for the first the first leg and then a submodel for the second leg and I what I did was to get these numbers all I did was I went back here to the leg order I double clicked or double clicked on the range and I right clicked and, and I copied and then whenever I went to create the the leg I clicked add and I typed leg number three and I would double click and then I would paste and that would put the node range in and I didn't have to go back and and hover over top of these numbers. So that made it very easy for me to create the submodels uh, for the individual legs. Uh, I also, so basically that's what I've done there. Uh, I also did create a, uh, a, uh, a group of spinner, spinner leg, right spinner legs. And uh, what I did was, uh, let's see, it's not showing up, let's see spinner maybe I put it in spinner legs right spinner here we go yeah spinner leg spinner right leg so you whenever you create a sub model it actually creates another model for you to go in here into a group and I created the sub model with all of this in it so I could quickly add it to my sequencer tab so with that being said let's go ahead and create a new um, sequence uh, it doesn't matter what the sequence uh, sound is, uh, let's just do um, uh, Christmas Eve in Sarajevo works fine, 20 frames per second, let's go to timings, and let's do uh, the Audacity Vampire plugin for beats, click OK, and this will be helpful as uh, we do some sequencing here. Uh, let's go ahead and click Done, it'll create the sequence, and I've already went in and I created a new view by going into Edit Display Elements, and I scroll down here, I added, you, if you resize this, you can see it. You, you can add a new view. I created one with spinners. 
whenever I created the spinners, I came down here and I put spinners all, which is my spinner all group. And once that was done, I could double click and you could see here is my spinner's leg group that I created. And then also the 96, spinal, uh, 96 pixel spinner right, which is the new model. And this is the original. So uh, let's go in. Oh, let's add that uh, this the timing to this too. Beats to the, here. We don't need this. Uh, so go ahead and close that. We've got the beats. Now let's move zoom in here. It always lags whenever I zoom in on this computer. I don't know why. And uh, so let's listen. And uh, so you know the song. I'm pretty sure you know the song well. Let's go right into the submodels section. If we double click on the uh, actual model and we come down here, we can see all the submodels are listed right here and then the strand level. If you double click, you can look at the strand level, which isn't helpful very much whenever you're doing sequencing. But um, if we go down here to the leg order, if we put, let's just work within the model, the physical, uh, uh, let's call it the uh, the physical matrix model, how it looks on the house. If we uh, turn on the butterfly effect, you can see that, oh, that's not the butterfly effect. How about shift B? There, no? Maybe I did that wrong. Uh -huh. I don't know my shortcuts. Delete, delete. Let's just grab it. Where's the butterfly effect? B. Butterfly effect, bam. Okay, so if we look at the effect rendered, we can see that this is the butterfly effect rendered as, uh, as over top of a model. Uh, if you want to if you want to uh, create the same effect just over the leg, you can do that. Uh, and then, of course, you can do that easily by just copy and pasting right over top of the legs. It will it'll render the effect pretty much identically because it's rendering it on the legs, but it's also doing it spatially. But I want to just work with the top level right now. So we have the on effect. Let's go over here. We can uh, we can then um, we can look at uh, some of the other effects like the bars effect. If you do bars. It will do bars right over top of it as if it's a, a matrix. Um, you can add in some colors here so you have three bars there. Uh, but let's get rid of the whole house preview. Uh, we have the render style as default. There's only one render style whenever you have this submodel here, I believe. It should say, there it is, single line. It finally showed up. And what it's doing is it's rendering the bars effect over uh, the single line. And it looks, it doesn't do pretty much anything that you're not expecting. So uh, we'll go ahead and delete that. And um, the one that I use mostly on this level of sequencing is the uh, shockwave effect. And um, basically what you're doing with shockwave is it's starting an explosion process. It's, it's going from the epicenter, the middle, all the way to the outside. And we do that by... Um, uh, physically grabbing the radius. The, the radius whoops, is set to zero here in the center and the further out, the wider out the radius, uh, the faster the explosion goes uh, or it kind of just happens. So if we keep it nice and close you can see that's a good shockwave effect if you're doing like an explosion. Um, and then you can also make the, the explosion, the, the particles a little longer I guess is a way to think about it. So you can create uh, your explosion just where it kind of more like fades and explodes, or you can make it where you have more part, or less particles and it's more of a, a real quick effect. So that's one of the, the things that I do quite often is I do that with the, um, with the, uh, the shockwave effect. I'm gonna lay another one down here and I'm gonna change it up a little bit uh, and change the colors a little bit so that it renders a little differently. Now, what I want to do is I want to do an implosion using the shockwave effect. And if we slide and kind of rearrange the um, rearrange the radiuses, this is kind of like the start and this is the end. So it starts on the outside wide and it ends on the inside at a zero. And once again, you can change your width and you can get it to uh, be a little bit more particles, a little bit more faded. Uh, and that's the width number one, that's the width at the beginning, I guess, and then the width at the end. Uh, so you can do that as well. 
you have options there whenever it comes to this. The ripple effect does work on this. Uh, I, I don't care for it as much. The ripple effect does a, a nice job with exploding, but it's more like individual separate particles. So if you want that nice like kind of firework explosion, I always go with shockwave. But if you want kind of a kind of a, a twinkly effect, the ripple does a good job with it. Uh, I like the implode on the uh, ripple effect. That does that does seem to work a little bit better for my tastes whenever I'm doing stuff. Uh, and I always like the 3D on it. So uh, that's that's just a little bit of the effects that you can do at that level. Uh, once again, like spirals works on it. If you're doing uh, the spiral or the bars, they work just fine on it. You can change the spiral wraps. You can make it a little more leaning. Um, you can make it. Uh, you can double up the palette. You can have two sets and make it smaller. Uh, you can 3D it. You, you know, there's there's a lot of options for you whenever it comes to spiral. Um, so let's keep going here. What else do we have? Um, 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 um. The curtain effect. The curtain effect is a neat effect. Uh, I do use this a lot. Um, we go left to right. We can we can open close. We can uh, open. Um, you can change the uh, the speed at which it renders. I hate the swag being set to three. Uh, that's the speed at which it renders. You can repeat it. And uh, yeah, the, the, the so on the upper layer, the actual spinner level, the physical uh, spinner visual, it, there's there's some effects that work really good, but I've learned that using the submodels is a little bit more helpful. So we'll go in and we'll do some sequencing now with the uh, submodels. And uh, let's zoom out and delete all these here because uh, specifically I want to, there's the delete. Specifically, I want to go with the uh, leg order, uh, the individual legs. So let's just use the on effect. And I know that with this song you have the, this'll be kind of nice to, to see this come out this way. So on, on on and if I copy all of this and I paste it down here you can see uh, I've created pretty much a, a simple on off effect but if we play it you get that kind of classic um, you get that classic uh, sort of chase that you would have if this were an incandescent spinner and you were running it off of an AC controller. Uh, similar to what I used to do in LOR, this is very nice. Uh, so uh, I'll also show you this with the AC toolbar. If you don't know the AC toolbar, it was added a couple versions ago. I'm using, uh, this is, I believe, uh, .23. I haven't updated to the new 24 version yet. Let's go in and let's um, go to the, uh, I think it's, the, is it the settings? No, it is the view. If you go into view, you can you have the option to show ramps, uh, show AC ramps where uh, channels ramp up and down. And you can also have the AC lights toolbar. And as you can see here, it's right here. And I'm going to turn that on. Actually, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to lay down the effect. And I'm just going to do on, and I'm going to change this to red. And I'm going to, uh, one more on so that you can you can see this so now I've got the AC effect on and I'm going to do to select this cascade and now I'm not laying any effects down I'm just going over one two three four uh, three more blocks from where I am one two three and then I'm gonna go up and what it will do is it will cascade this effect over this range and we'll do this again for this here and this is makes it so much simpler to uh, to sequence and do a chase. So if we go up here and play this, it gives you kind of a nice simple uh, a simple chase, and I like that uh, about the effect. Now another effect I want to do is let's do the single strand effect. Uh, there we go, and let's let's do it a little bit longer. Let's make it. Let's make it white, and um, 
if we increase the chase size, this should uh, make it a little bigger. Uh, and let's do a 3D fade. So now you've got a chase from the beginning of the string to the end of the string. And if we, once again, we turn on this cascade, the AC toolbar, and we click on the effect and drag it the whole way through, look what we get. We get this neat little spin uh, off of the uh, AC toolbar effect. Uh, makes it so much easier. We can also, we can recreate that effect. Let's do that. Only let's put it down here on the bottom. I just arrowed down. Um, and let's change it to right to left. So now it's going in. And let's also change the number of chases. Let's do two chases and let's add color. And let's also add a transition out of 0.2. So that'll fade it. And let's now again turn on the AC toolbar and click and drag. Uh oh, I forgot to select that tool and it does it for you. So now if we play this, you get some really neat effects using the single strand, which you could not do any other way with using the individual model here uh, of, of the uh, spinner. So we'll keep going. I've got a couple other ones. You've got the uh, bars effect, which is a little harder to use. We'll click on the bars effect. And as you can see, We'll, we'll spread it out a little bit. Um, bars effect just changes the color, and that's due to uh, the directional approach that bars has. If we change this to left or right, you can see now that that fixes the, uh, the way that, um, that the effect is, a re is rendered over top of the spinner. And we can copy this and paste this against all of the other legs. And that kind of gives you that imploding effect with it just being bars. So um, there's that as well. We can actually extend that the whole length of the timing by clicking and dragging and holding the shift key. There we go. And uh, so bars is a little bit more uh, complex whenever it comes to that. So that, that just be aware that sometimes in order to get the effect to render or do something cool, you have to change some of the effect uh, parameters that are listed there. Uh, let's see, what else do we like? We like morph. Everybody likes morph. So if we morph, um, remember that if you go into the layout and you pull up that individual substring, that substrand, I guess you could, you could call it, Spinner, SP, I, uh, I don't want to do this because as soon as I do, it will crash. Um, it renders as a straight line. Uh, so it's always good to, uh, to whenever you have the morph set, to change this to like a single sweep left or right. There we go. And you can see how it's morphing from uh, the outside to the inside, or you can change it from left to right or right to left, whatever you want it to do. And if you do that, let's see. That looks a little neater, more neat. Um, let's go ahead and use the cascade effect over uh, three uh, things. There you go. There's a morph uh, on the individual leg. Now, what happens if you um, if you use? Let's change this from AC. Uh, what happens if you use the uh, um, the shockwave effect because now you're rendering the shockwave effect from the center of the string, not the center of the actual model. And obviously, if you take this and we do our little AC toolbar and cascade effect here, you create this effect that goes this way, or you can uh, create, whoops, that's not what I wanted. You can create this effect here, and you can actually just do it the whole way down. Let's change the colors so we got something a little different. Green and yellow. And let's go ahead and just do that the same as all of these. There we go. So you get a little different effect because now it is rendered over the entire uh, leg versus doing it over the entire spinner where here is how it would be if it was just on the spinner. Now you get it on 
each individual leg. So it's a lot different uh, method of rendering. And that's why we like the submodels. The submodels give us uh, so much more control over what we're doing. Um, another one that I liked was, uh, let's go in here to Marquee. And if we go into leg order, we haven't used this yet. Let's go into leg order. Uh, the marquee effect outlines the start, uh, the the outline of the uh, actual prop. And it doesn't look like really anything. So if we go in and we have it on leg order, let's go in and change the, in this layer setting in the buffer tab, uh, go into single line. And this kind of gives it something a little bit neat. Uh, let's change the color to, to a little bit more contrast green and purple. Let's make it a little bit, let's see the band size be a little bigger. And you, you can see what it does over, let's make it a longer period of time. And then let's add in this blur. This is a neat little feature. It kind of blurs and we can make this band size a little smaller. And let's pick, let's do pick up that yellow. So you have this little kind of a morph type effect over top of the strings. The, the, uh, the blur gives you kind of a, uh, uh, a blending of colors or a softening between each of the colors in the, in the effect. So uh, it's always neat to try blur with any of the effects that you're running. Um, how this renders, though, on the leg, uh, we'll, we'll do it individually on each individual leg. And let's copy it like this. And let's make it a little bit, um, let's make it a little smaller. And you can see here, if we just copy and paste it, that it's a little bit different. It has nothing to do with this. It doesn't look anything like this, but it has it renders differently because the way the effect is rendered on the individual line. So I think that's that's another neat thing for, for something to sustain in a, in a song whenever you have some instrumental like this. So uh, let's go ahead and click Home, and let's uh, have a look at the, uh, the actual sequencing. Um, so guys, I know this is a pretty long video, um, but I wanted to give you the option to look at how you can change, uh, change up all of your uh, sequencing by just adding in that buffer, uh, in, adding in the buffer, changing from single line to default, uh, how it changes the effects, how rendering the effect on each of the different levels does create something different. Uh, so how, how the uh, ripple effect works or how the uh, shockwave effect works. It's a lot different whenever you do it at the node level. It's just a little bit different. It adds a different touch to it. Uh, using the AC toolbar uh, to create that, that kind of cascade or chase effect, which was something I terribly missed from, uh, from uh, LOR. And now I'm so glad to see it here. It's available for you to use. Uh, you can't sequence, unfortunately, you can't sequence I don't believe with, uh, if I put an effect here, that's the, uh, that's an effect I just laid down. Let's turn it off and I'll show you. That's the, the uh, on effect. And it did it with, with white. You can't sequence a lot with the AC toolbar in a pixel prop, but uh, you can use that cascade effect, which I, if the developers watch this, maybe you could add the cascade effect as an option up here. Uh, somewhere into the effects bar. I don't know how you could do that, but it'd be really nice if you could. Uh, so guys, thanks for taking the time to check out the video. Uh, like the video if you like the video. If you thought the video was terrible, dislike it. But leave your comments down below. Let's have some discussion on this. And thanks again for watching. So take care. We'll see you soon.